Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May the words of our mouth and everything that we do be acceptable, be pleasing to the Lord. The meditations of our hearts, what we're thinking, let it be pleasing to God. This morning, I'm so grateful for this opportunity to stand before you to share with you a little bit of God's word and what he has spoken to me about, and I trust that it would also speak to your heart. And the title of this message today is Pleasing God Alone. You know, we cannot enjoy the peace of God. We cannot enjoy the blessings that God has in store for us until we're willing to live our lives to please him. And as we please the Lord, he alone is going to do the blessing. So as that song and um, Sister Tamika and the worship team, I really thank you for all those songs that have been sung, those praise songs that are leading up to, the, to this message because it just ties right in with everything. The Holy Spirit is up to something. So before we get started, let's bow our hearts in prayer. Heavenly Father, this morning, oh God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, oh God, for the praises that have already gone up. We thank you, O oh God, Lord, for the worship, Lord, that everything we do is an act of worship as unto you. And whatever we do, O oh God, we pray that it will be pleasing to you. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for those who are in the sanctuary, for those who have joined us virtually, and those who are on their way. Father, we pray, O oh God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. This is our prayers in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask you if you can just stand, those of you in the sanctuary, for one scripture reading, Acts chapter 5. We stand in honor of God's word. Acts chapter 5 and verse 29. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than men. Let me repeat that. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than men. Lord, bless this word in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. For those of you who have joined us virtually, we trust that you are relaxing on your couches, you know, maybe on, on your jobs, wherever you are. I pray that some nugget of this word will be penetrated in your heart and you will test the word as the spirit allows you to. We want to please God in everything we do. We are to obey him rather than man. And what that passage of scripture tells me is only what we do for God matters. You know, people will love you today and hate you tomorrow when you can't please them. People would, you know, say, I got your back right now. And then in the next five minutes, they will turn their backs on you. But what really matters to all of us, it's not pleasing your spouse. It's not pleasing your manager, your boss, your friends, your neighbors. What truly matters, and I want, this is a teaching moment. as It, is, it was for me, and I hope it will be for you that we are people pleasers. We want everyone to like us. We want to be in the in crowd. We want to be a part of the clique. So we are going to please people in everything that they want us to do. It's not bad 
if the benefit is for both parties and if it is pleasing to God. You know, I listened to that song over and over again. And even though those words have been said maybe hundreds of times through my mouth, it really resonated with me the last couple of days. And for me, as a child of God, I realized at this stage of my walk with God, it's all about pleasing him. And when we please God, everything else is going to fall in place. You know, you always hear pastors say, you know, it's not about my wife or my children or even the church. It's first about God. And that's the order of things. And if we put things in order, then we don't have to worry. Because if we're pleasing God, men will also be pleased. And those are men who believe and trust in God. Your enemies are not going to like that. Not pleasing God is a sin. God has created us to worship him. You know, like I said a couple of seconds ago, people may like you today and dislike you tomorrow. Not so with God. God loves us so much that he wants us to know that he is all that we need. The word of God lets us know that we must always obey him. I want to ask you a question. Who are you trying to please? Who are you trying to please? In this very moment, you might have something to do when you leave the sanctuary or for those of you online in the next day, in the next couple of hours, you might have a decision to make. And you might want to please someone. But have you stepped back and asked the question, is it pleasing to God? Some people are not going to like you when you're telling the truth. But as you continue to live in the truth and in God's word, he would allow them to see things as you see it, which is the way God sees it. Opinions of others should not matter before you ask the question, what is God's opinion of me? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever sat back and thought about what is God's opinion of me? You, in the sanctuary, you online, I'm asking you to let that sink in. You know, a while ago, um, Pastor and I were talking, and he said something that was very profound to me. You know, when people sometimes do not speak and they listen more, you cannot tell what's going on in their minds and in their hearts. And we might ask or we might, we might want to know the opinions of others, but they'll have to tell us. Because if they don't, you don't know. But when you're silent, sometimes that person is thinking so terribly about you. And you think everything is okay. You're smiling, you're going along, and you think that's your friend, that's your buddy, but they resent you. Their opinion of you matters to you but have you asked 
the question, what is God's opinion of me? God is looking down upon us. And is he shaking his head? Is he sad? Is he happy? Is he like, you know, throwing up the confetti? Hallelujahs. My children are doing what I have created them to do. Is God happy that you and I are living our purpose-driven life? Have we ever sat back and asked the question, what is God's opinion of me? You might get it on your way home. You might think about it. But in this moment of your thinking, think about who you want to recognize you. Think about whether it is better to please man than to please God. As our scripture, our scripture reading says, Peter and the other apostles, they were telling all, was it the Sanhedrin or the Sadducees? They were telling all around them. They said, we must obey God rather than men. Am I doing everything I do to please God? I can say I don't give it a thought sometimes. No, I'm not. I want to live my life that way, but sometimes I make rash decisions. I don't invite God in. So God does not have an opportunity to give me direction. And when I do it my way, it always is a shipwreck. But if we take a moment to step back and say, not only what is God's opinion of me, what is he thinking? Is God smiling? You know, I love it. Even with my mom at 91 years old, I love when she smiles. You know when you're doing something right. At 91, she's still telling us how to cook how to make her meals, yes. And when it's good, right? You've gotten mom's opinion. You've gotten her, okay, good job. She's going to eat it. But if it's not good, it's like, oh, no. Okay? No? Okay? Think about God. Think about God when we're not doing things right, right? He's asking that question. How can we, and I'm asking the question, how can we identify when we are, you got to figure it out, right? You got to figure it out. How can we figure out when we are pleasing others and not God? It's, sometimes it's simple. Sometimes it's not. Because if it's blatant sin, you know, right? But some things are very subtle. So let's look at Proverbs chapter 15 and verse number 3. Proverbs 15 and verse number 3. Thank you. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. For all of us, we are all sinners. All have come short of the glory of God. You know, they say rain don't fall on one man's door. Rain is not going to pour just over your house. It's going down the block and down the state. And, you know, it's not just at your door. But the eyes of the Lord are watching. He's watching us as his children, as Christians. And he's watching those who are on the sideline who have not yet made a decision. And he's watching those on the sidelines who are watching us to see what we are going to do. Because some people are not going to ever read this word. 
They're never going to read it. They're going to read you and I. Are we pleasing God? And by so doing, are we pleasing creation, men, that they would make the right decisions? How can we say we are children of God? We are his children and we are disobeying him. We're not living according to his word. How can we say we're, you know, when little children, I mean, I'm sure some of you who were in the sanctuary earlier saw two of our grandsons. They were excited. They were clapping. They were spinning. They were all over the place. And I was trying to get them to settle down. We we're in church. But the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, would let us know when we are doing what is right. And if we are not settling ourselves down to hear from God, we're not going to be able to please him. We are not going to be able to please him. There is a quote, you know, Pastor Love's quote, I learned from the best. So sometimes when the Holy Spirit said, look, you know, Pastor have looked, you love quotes, and I attach it to the word. So this is a quote that I found from I like to quote.com and hear what it says. People have the right to their opinion and you have the right to ignore it. It's not wonderful. It's not wonderful when you're pleasing God and you're trying to walk in his ways, not perfect. You're trying to walk the straight and narrow. You're trying to live a righteous life. And people will say, you hypocrites, you know, you unsaved, you know, they give you all kinds of names. But you and I, with our relationship with God, you need to know, am I doing my best? Am I walking the best way I can, Lord, to please you. That's why each and every day, it's momentarily, when something is slipping up, you quick get back, you know, let the Holy Spirit lead you. People would have their opinions, but if it's not in line with God's word, you ignore it. You don't let it get to you and pull you down because you and I must be the example of the light of Christ. And we can't, you know, go along with every opinion. So I, I love this. It just popped up, you know, and I said, oh, let me, let me write that down. Plus I have two, um, two more quotes somewhere along the line. Yes, yes. Praise the Lord. Now, Always saying yes when you should say no. I count it sin. You know, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. When your answer should be no and you want to please people, you would say yes. But guess what happens? You resent it. You're angry with yourself. You get sick in your body. You know, some people, and I always try to do this as a leader in this church. As a leader in Living Hope Outreach Center, I try when I am getting people involved in ministry to make sure that they have spoken to God about it, to make sure that they're comfortable with it. Because you might ask someone to be involved or to do something and they don't want to do it and they are resenting it, Pastor. You don't know they're saying yes to you. And they walk out there and they get in their car and they call Sister So and so and they say, Do you know Pastor Carol asked me to do this? And he got all them other people 
in the church. I got two jobs, and they resent the fact that they have been asked. And you, pastor, don't even know it because the answer should have been simply, pastor, I, you know, I'm not ready. I can't do that right now. I don't even know how to do that. I don't want to mess it up. While you have some people, they're, all their answers are no. They just don't, like, they don't have giftings. They don't have talents. Everything is no, you know, to them. So you have those on the opposite side of the spectrum who, pastor, I'm busy. Pastor, I'm not gifted for that, you know. So we must check ourselves to make sure that we are not always saying yes when the answer should be no. Sometimes people flatter you. And look what the word of God says in 1 Thessalonians 2, 4 to 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. It's all in the word. I'm not making it up. Jeez, thank you. Thank you. Yes. That the Holy Spirit, isn't it wonderful when you're led by the Holy Spirit? You feel so comfortable, right? But my God, when you're going off track. On the contrary, we speak as men approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. Isn't it wonderful? God is entrusting his holy word with you and I. We are not trying to please men, but God who tests our hearts. Tests our motives, right? You know we never use flattery, nor did we put on a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness, regardless of what that greed is. But some people like to flatter. They like to flatter you. You know, many years ago, I realized that the people who tell you the truth love you. Many years ago. You see, my daughters especially, and a few women in this congregation, they really, truly have my back. And I was asked the question not too long ago. Because, you know, some people, they, you know, they feel they got it all together. And they don't need anybody to tell them what to do, when to do it, how to do it. They got it all together. But I've learned that when the people who love you tell you the truth, even though it hurts, it may give you an opportunity. It will give you an opportunity to change, to make that change. You see, if the Holy Spirit is not active and operational in our lives every day, you see, when somebody tells you the truth, Boom, the Holy Spirit either already told you or at that moment, you just feel that piercing in your heart. That is truth. And you want to make that change. My daughters tell me, hard, harsh. But don't let people, people's opinion, of you if you have a weakness don't let them go back constantly to that weakness if you're working on it you know what I say to them when did that happen give me an example when oh um at the Pines Manor, when, is our, when it was our 15th anniversary celebration, that was four years ago, five years almost. Oh, 
Have I done that again? No, but you know, you did it. You must have regards for people's feelings. You and I need to have regards for each other's feelings. I hurt people. People hurt me. But when you know that you have hurt someone, you must be bold enough and ask God to give you the grace, not only for you to go back and ask for forgiveness, but for you to be able to forgive yourself. When we have slipped up, are we pleasing God as children of God every day? I tell myself, today is a blessed day. Today is a day of gratefulness. I'm grateful. The gratitude is spewing all over me because I'm alive. It's another opportunity for me to please God and God alone. And as I please God, I will please my brothers and sisters in Christ. Don't let pleasing others cause you to be resentful. Allowing people to take advantage of you, especially in the workplace, on the job, is not of God. Let me just say it right now. If you've been hired to do a job and you've accepted to do the job, do the job and do it well. But if people are taking advantage of you, and it's not in your job description that you have accepted, let your manager or your boss know you didn't sign up for that. Before you go to them, go to God and ask God, is this pleasing to you, God? Should I do this, God? Like I said, some sins are subtle. Some sins are just out there blatant that you could say, oh no, I'm not doing this. This is not right. But some things are very subtle. Is it pleasing to God? Or is that thing just killing you? It's sapping the life out of you. And you know you should not be doing it. But you still do it because I'm getting a paycheck. And God is saying, I have something better over there for you. If you would take care of this, I want you to be my witness. I want you to please me in everything that you do. And you may be out of a job for a couple of weeks or months, some of them years, but I'm your provider. I have something over here for you that I'm going to bless you with. But if we're not in tune with God... We do not know, is my action pleasing to God? You know, I opened and I said, we, we're all sinners, saved by God's grace. The word of God tells us that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. You ever saw... You know, you ever see people who are angry, people who can't forgive, people who just live their life in angst, they're always uptight. That is not pleasing to God. Some people can't let go. What happened last month, last week, more so yesterday. They haven't taken care of it as yet. They can't let go. But you and I must do our part to please God and God alone. Because we want to know, God, what is your opinion of Wendella? God, what is your opinion of me? The answers that come back sometimes are not good. I'm talking about me. The answers that comes back from God... To Wendella sometimes is not good. And I have to ask forgiveness. I have to be genuine in my cleanup. 
I have to make sure that I take care of that before I can move on. God is not going to bless us if we want to please everyone else and not please him. This message is simple. A little child can get it. We're teaching our children that God is watching over you. God is everywhere. When you bend down, when you go out to play, when you pray, when you, you know, whatever it is, God, we're teaching our children the awareness of his presence. What is his opinion of you and I? I want us to look at Proverbs chapter 16 and verse number 7. Proverbs 16 and verse 7. When a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemies live at peace with him. When a man's ways, when you and I, when our ways are pleasing to God, he makes those who hate us, those who despitefully use us, he lets those whose motives are not pure, he lets even them be at peace with us. You know what he does sometimes? He shuts them out. Just like how he shut the mouth of the lion. He sometimes, he wouldn't allow us to speak if we are about to say something negative to someone. God would let our enemy rethink it. He said, not, not today. Mm -mm, not this time. Not this time. Mm -mm. Doing what God has called us to do is all that matters. We need to have courage to confront sin when we want to walk in obedience. If we want to operate in our calling, in 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse number 20, let's go there. 1 Timothy 5 and 20 says, Those who sin are to be rebuked publicly so that the others may take warning. Different translation says, Those who continue to sin. You know, it's like, train up a child in the ways of the Lord. The child keeps putting their hands in that jar all the time and you tell them no. And they continue. So now you're going to let the brother or the sisters know. You're going to let the class know that when you see little Tommy putting his hand in the cookie jar, you're to help him. Because we all need to help one another. Those who sin, we must rebuke. But not just this passage of scripture. We must rebuke in love. We must rebuke so that that sin will not be committed any longer. Sometimes it's a second, third, fourth, maybe 70 times. You got to keep telling them. But God is going to allow us to walk in obedience to his word. Are you walking in your calling? Are you doing what God has created you to do? Or are you operating in someone else's shadow? Do you know God, have, God has called you to be the best person that he has created you to be? You know there's no one that can do that thing, that thing that you only know in your heart. No one else knows that thing that the Holy Spirit keeps prodding you, prodding you about, and others are seeing it. 
and they're saying, you're good at that. And you're like, oh, no. And God is, yes, I've gifted you. I've given you all the resources you need for that thing so that you can please me. And when you please me, you will please all others, men that you interact with. All other mankind, humankind that you interact with. Don't try to be like somebody else. You know, I tell people all the time, I've never wanted to be anyone else. Never. Never. Nose, face, ears, you know, head, big head, forehead, big, you know. I never, from my recollection, wanted to be anyone else. God created me and I am going to please him and him alone. And I had to come to this stage of my life. I'm not going to tell you my age. But I had to come to this stage of my life to know that pleasing people will kill me. It will frustrate you. It will make you sick. But you have to have joy in your heart. Not resentment. Joy about doing anything that God has called you to do. He has a plan for each and every one of our lives. And if you really believe this word, you're going to saturate your life with it. You know, in the book of Jeremiah, he said, he has a plan for us to prosper us, not to harm us. You know, God has a plan for each and every one of our lives. And if you work that plan, if you and I work that plan, then we're going to please God in everything that we do. We're going to live a life of righteousness. In Romans 8.1, it lets us know that there is no condemnation. You see, in God's word, if we take it and chew it, you know, some people want to say, oh, I have read the Bible 20 times. Them old people, maybe 20 times. They can say a whole lot of verses. But God's word lets me know there is now, therefore, no condemnation for those who are in him. Don't let people put you on a guilt trip. Live your life without condemnation. Pastor, here is my second quote. And guess who it's from? Albert Einstein. It says, Great spirits have always encountered violent opposition from mediocre minds. I wish, Brother Damien, I had given that to you. That is a quote. Great spirits. Think about you and think about the Holy Spirit in you. Was Albert Einstein a Christian? Was he a man of God? I don't know. I don't know, but hear what he's saying here. And hear what the Lord dropped in my spirit. Great, the great spirit in me is the Holy Spirit. The greatness of God in me, okay, will, or it has allowed me to encounter violent opposition. You and I are going to be tested by those in the world. You online who have joined us and listening to this word, don't let people make you feel less of yourself. You know, I'm not coming to church because they got a ton of reasons why. That's okay. I'm not associating myself with you because especially with this pandemic or everything is but a pandemic because okay but the holy spirit in us is so great that the world outside hates us the world outside the mediocre people outside hates us 
and wants to attack us. So this quote is for you and I who know that the greatness of the Holy Spirit in us will cause people to rise up against us in our position of what we believe in. They're mediocre. They don't know the word of God. We need to let the word of God saturate and live in our lives. We'll never be able to please everyone. So guess what? I have decided to please God alone. You and I will never this entire sanctuary of people and those of you online, if I say one word or one sentence, maybe half the people I've lost, half are mad, you know, several walk away from, from their computers already, not believing. We will not be able to please everyone. So make up in your minds like I have done. I have made up in my mind to follow Jesus and to please him and him alone. That is what I have decided, to please God and God alone. Before you make your next decision, before you make your next move, ask yourself, does God want me to do this? I am very grateful for people who I'm accountable to. People who I listen to, not just my husband, outside of him. I am grateful for people who I am accountable to that will keep me on the straight and narrow. That will let me know when my words are not seasoned with grace. That would let me know when I'm going for the juggler and I should be going for the heart. I am not perfect, but I'm striving to please God in my imperfection. I do not want my enemy to get a foothold of the peace that I enjoy. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, the peace that I enjoy, I am amazed at it. I am amazed at it. In all the confusion, I know that anything that is contrary or that is in opposition to the word of God is not pleasing to God. I am learning every day. Let's go to 1 John 1.9. 1 John 1.9. The word of God lets us know. If we confess our sins. He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. You might have to confess every day, sometimes some weeks, that's how it seems like. You are confessing every day. But it would be less confession of our sins if we strive to please God. I ask the question again. Have you asked yourself at any time in your life what is God's opinion of me? What is God's opinion of me? 
And do you receive an answer back that it's pleasing to him? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, today, O oh God, I thank you for your word. Lord, that lets us know, O oh God, that the opinions of others do not matter if we're not striving to please you. Lord, this message, O oh God, Lord, is not to let anyone feel good or bad about themselves. But it's to allow us, O oh God, to search our hearts and to see where we are in our relationship with you. Father, sometimes the response from you is not what we want, but you give us opportunity to come and confess our sins and you will forgive us and you will cleanse us from the sins that we have committed. Father, I pray right now, O oh God, for myself. I pray for my brothers and sisters who are in the sanctuary and those who are listening, O oh God, to this message online. Father, that we will search our hearts and we would see if our motives are pure and if we're living to please you or if we're looking for the opinions of others. Father, I ask you, O oh God, to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us in your precious blood. Father, I pray, O oh God, right now for anyone who's struggling with unforgiveness that will keep them back, O oh God, from moving forward with you. I pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that that spirit of unforgiveness will be destroyed in your son's name. I pray for those who are struggling, O oh God, who need a touch from you, O oh God, Lord, for their health. Father, touch them right now and heal their bodies. I pray for those who are making excuses, O oh God. Those who are looking for a way out, O oh God. Those who are going through the motions, O oh God. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I ask you, O oh God, to search their hearts and let them come to you, O oh God. Lord, as we are coming right now, O oh God, we are taking a moment to ask ourselves, Lord, what is your opinion of me? Father, I want to do everything to please you. Lord, bless your word unto our hearts and glorify your name. This is our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for listening. I pray that whatever you do will be pleasing to God and God alone.